everybody, welcome to today's video providing a simple overview of how to formulate or refine a research question using the most popular PICO or SPIDER tools. These tools are used as a guide and you might start from scratch using the acronym to prompt keywords to formulate a research question, or you could have a research question already and then make tweaks to it using PICO or SPIDER to refine that question. I'll be linking these tools to some example research questions and I'll provide some key references um, as some of you I know are probably doing dissertations or assignments, so you need to reference those authors. As a nurse by background, the research questions are going to link to healthcare. So I hope you find the video useful. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up on YouTube if you did, and do check out my other free videos on my YouTube channel. So the original PICO tool came from Richardson et al in 1995, and if you need the full reference, it's provided at the end of the video. This PICO acronym relates to the key elements of a clinical research question that includes patient, intervention, comparison, outcome, and later the letter T was added for time or type of study, which I'll talk about later. The original PICO acronym was used more for quantitative research questions. So I'm going to start with the original tool and present a quantitative research question on the next slide using the tool. So if we just look at what the tool um, links to, so P population types, this links to types of patients. It links to potentially the patient's condition, key characteristics, their age, gender or ethnicity. I for intervention. So here we're thinking about what intervention or exposure or test are you doing? Did the patients receive, for example, a medication, radiation or surgery or counselling? C for comparison. Is there a control group who receive no additional treatment or you have a placebo group so that you can compare between groups and participants? Outcomes. What outcomes did the researchers measure to assess effectiveness of an intervention? And were these outcomes measured? So you could have outcomes such as decreased mortality, um, decreased pain, tremors, anxiety, infection rates, decreased, decreased length of stay or decreased anxiety, for example. So if we look at an example quantitative clinical research question, does the use of X medication compared with a placebo affect hospital length of stay in patients with dementia? Now there's different ways of writing a research question and you might prefer to start with in patients with dementia, does the use of X medication, etc. Um, when we look at the PICO though, we can see how it relates to this research question. So the population, people with dementia in hospital, I for intervention, so you've got your medication. C, the comparison is a placebo. And O, outcome, hospital length of stay. Or the outcome could be cognitive ability or decline instead of length of stay. So you could see here where you could start with PICO and you're thinking about those key areas, population, intervention, comparison and outcome. Or you might have a research question and you're just refining and looking at those four elements of that clinical research question. So the original PICO was later adapted into PICO with a T by Finout, Overhout and Johnson in 2005. Again, if any of you are doing the thesis, I've provided the full reference at the end of this talk. And the original PICO tool was adapted into this more broader acronym to make it easier to formulate both qualitative and quantitative and mixed method research study questions or literature review questions. And I've related the research question I use for my PhD um, I did an integrative review and um, I have a PhD research question, um, which is what is the quality of nurse patient interactions when nurses use an electronic patient record system in acute care hospital wards? So you'll see P population is the same as the original PICO and I'm looking at registered nurses and patients. I for intervention, but also we have issue here, so it makes it slightly broader. And I've put my issue as nurses, electronic patient record use, or it could be EPR, just electronic patient records. C for comparison, also in this tool, we have um, context, and I've put the context as acute hospital wards. O for outcome is I'm assessing the quality of interactions, um, and it's linked to, so I've put mine quality of nurse patient interactions as the outcome. And then you've got T, which could it link to time or type of study or the type of clinical question being considered. And T is sometimes omitted, which is absolutely fine. It depends on your clinical research question. So I was sort of thinking about when I was doing my review, the type of studies that I was looking at, qualitative, quantitative, mixed method studies, observational studies. I ended up looking at observational studies. Um, but it very much depends on your type of clinical question. 
So we've presented another example clinical research question linked to PICO where the T links to time. The question is what are newly registered nurses perceptions of preceptorship support during their first year registered in the UK or you might write it as what are UK newly registered nurses so this is where you can tweak your research questions. Um, so P population with newly registered nurses, it's, um, UK newly registered nurses, I intervention or itch, issue is preceptorship support, C comparison or context is any hospital or community setting, outcome is nurses perceptions and then T for time is during the first year registered. So we've got this time parameter. And you can use this um, PICO as well to refine your um, database searching. So for example, if you had thousands of articles linked to that question, if that was a re literature review question, um, you could narrow it down to only be hospital preceptorship or preceptorship in the community, which will help reduce your number of database search hits. So you can also use PICO to refine database searches and you can tweak your research questions according to how many papers you've got if you want to zoom into a topic, narrow down the amount of papers or you want to make your search broader and that's a great way, a great tool to do that as well. So we also have the SPIDER acronym from Cook et al 2012 which was originally designed for qualitative research questions and the references at the end. So I've got an example question to show how I've linked it to the tool. What are registered nurses and support workers views and attitudes of flexible working in UK hospital settings? So S for sample, the sample here is registered nurses and support workers. PI, the phenomenon of interest is flexible working in UK hospital settings. D for design, I'll be looking at interviews and questionnaires research that links to interviews and questionnaires, E for evaluation, and evaluation might include attitudes, perceptions, experiences, but in this case it's views and attitudes, and R, the research type will be mainly qualitative, there may be some descriptive quantitative data in there, but mainly qualitative. So I hope that helps show how I've linked a SPIDER acronym to a research question, or you could do it vice versa, you could not have a research question and then start thinking about um, those elements of a research question. So there are some alternative acronyms out there and the Critical Appraisal Skills Programme website is a fantastic internationally renowned website with lots of resources on there and these tools will be, you'll find these tools on there. So we have PICO which includes population exposure comparison and outcome so the exposure replaces intervention and it's helpful when exploring associations relating to environmental exposure and health outcomes. PCOC stands for, the P stands for patient population problem, and I for intervention, C for comparison, and L for outcomes, and C for context. And this one sometimes is used for service improvement projects. Then you've got COCOPOP, which is condition, context, and population. And that one might be helpful when you want to focus on the um, prevalence of a condition or disease or symptom, but you haven't identified an intervention yet. So you want to compare interventions. And then you've got SPICE, which is setting, population or perspective, intervention, comparison and population. And SPICE is a framework that you can use with qualitative questions such as, as those in evaluating experiences or meaningfulness. So do check out those other alternative acronyms when you're looking at your research question. So I hope you found this video helpful. Do check out my other videos. They're all free on my YouTube channel. So any of you that need references for your assignments or dissertations, um, I'm not allowed to put the Critical Appraisal Skills Programme is available as a website and I'm not allowed to put the HTTP link because it takes you off YouTube. Um, but you can see that very easily um, by going on Google. Then you've got Cook and EBSCO, and I'll go through some of the other. Find out over Houghton Johnson, Richardson. I won't go too quickly because if you need to write the reference down, it sometimes goes too quickly. And I wish you every success if you've got a research study, dissertation or an assignment. I really hope the video has helped. If you have any questions, put them in the YouTube comments. You might want to DM me privately rather than put them on public forum. And you can DM me on Twitter 
um, or on my website if you have any private questions you want to ask me. And also do check out my books. I've got a book, How to Thrive as a Newly Registered Nurse and How to Prepare for Interviews and Develop Your Career. And the links are in the description.